Dance Boys, you can hear what he has to say. His name is Dance Boy, he thinks the world is all over. What up, Net fans? Nets boy here. Bring your latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. All right. It's been over two weeks since my last Nets boy episode. You know, a lot has happened uh, with the Nets. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm trying to get these episodes done as soon as I can. But Nets boy is a very busy person. And obviously, it's the holidays. You know, happy belated Thanksgiving. Uh, Nets boy, I know this year has been thankful for the Nets not being a complete disaster. Though uh, <laughs> they're starting to look like it. Um, we'll touch upon that in a second. So I apologize that these videos take so long every once in a while, but I'm trying. So just bear with me. And yeah, so here we are. This episode today, I'm just going to focus on all the injuries that has transpired for the Nets to start this season. Because, I mean, there's a lot of things I could talk about, right? I could talk about the Nets, you know, going three and four the last seven games. You know, with a great win over the Clippers, you know, I could talk about how they got blown out by the 76ers. I could talk about the tough overtime loss to the Hawks recently. All these, I could touch upon a number of things, but but these injuries just are ridiculous. So I, I'm just going to kind of focus on that and focus on the major injuries and what it means for this team moving forward. Okay, so the Nets have been dealing with injuries since the beginning of the season. Right, Cam Johnson started off the season hurt. Then Claxton got hurt after the first game, but the Nets still hung in there. And I kept saying, "Oh, when this team gets healthy, look out!" You know, they're playing really well now with missing key pieces. When they all come back, they're going to start rolling, right? And you know, Johnson comes back, then Claxton, and I'm like, "Here they go!" And then Cam Thomas gets hurt. Now look, we all know I've been very critical of Cam Thomas. All right. We all know that I think, you know, that he's one dimensional, that, you know, he doesn't make anyone around him better, that he's a black hole, that he plays losing basketball. You know, these are these are things that I've said in previous Nets books. And I still stand by that. But the reality is the Nets need Cam Thomas. The way the team is set up, the way it's constructed, the Nets need a go-to playmaking scorer who can create his own shot down the stretch of games. And that is Cam Thomas. Look, Mikael Bridges had a great game against the Hawks, right? I think he scored 46 points or something. He made big shot after big shot, big play after big play. But the reality is, he is not the guy you want to count in night in and night out to try to make the big play down the stretch to win the game. Like, he's someone who can be an option, but he's not someone like, like a Jimmy Butler or, or you know, even a Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant or a Luka Doncic or Donovan Mitchell or these type of players that are notoriously known to make big plays down the stretch, he's not that type of player. And that's not a knock on him. He's a good player. I've said he's an all-star caliber player, but he's just not the guy. And it is so frustrating to see him try to be. And, and, and like, just look at the difference down the stretch between Trey Young and the shots he made and Mikael Bridges and the shots he made. Trey Young was so laid back and easy, flow of the offense, knew how to get his shot off, knew how to hit a floater, hit a mid-range shot, knew what to do. And Mikael Bridges just dribbling in circles all frantic. And it's just not good basketball. But when you don't have anyone else who can really score the basketball on a consistent basis, then the Nets don't have a lot of other options. I guess maybe Spencer Dinwiddie? I actually think, you know, Lonnie Walker IV would have been my choice, but he was almost phased out of this, the game in the second half. He scored eight points in the first half, then he didn't score again the rest of the way, and he barely played. So, like, honestly, without Cam Thomas, I think Lonnie Walker is your best shot creator. And notice I'm saying creator. I'm not trying to say score, shot creator. These are people who can create separation and get their shot off when it matters. Like, all big games usually come down to – execution in the isolation down the stretch of games who has the best playmaking shot creating iso player with under two minutes to go how often th think about the nba it might be a team game for the first 46 minutes the last two minutes whoever has the best player on the court 
usually wins because those players are able to make the plays when it matters. And the reality is, that's not Mikel Bridges. But Cam Thomas, it really could be. And if Cam Thomas was out there, he would probably make more shots than 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 uh, uh, Mikel Bridges. He would have made it easier for Mikel Bridges to get his shots off because the defense could would not be focusing on Mikel Bridges. They'd be worried about Cam Thomas getting to his spots or taking a tough shot or getting into the lane. The Nets need Cam Thomas. They they do. He's their best consistent scorer. He's their more, most versatile scorer. He is a walking bucket. And yes, he has his flaws. I bring him up all the time. But without him, this next team is not going to go anywhere. Okay. So I'm not really going to talk about the injury to Dennis Smith Jr. Um, you know, I know that it definitely has impacted this Nets team, especially on the defensive end. And I know he's been playing pretty well for the Nets. And, you know, there are definitely moments, especially these last couple of games, where I think he would have really helped this Nets team. But, you know, he's dealing with back spasms. He missed the last two games. You know, he's probably going to miss another game or two. But it's nothing expected to be that serious, so hopefully he'll come back because, like I said, he could really help this Nets team defensively. But what I am going to talk about is Ben the Useless Simmons. Where to begin, where to begin. Out of nowhere, magical Ben Simmons hip injury. I mean, he played one game, and then all of a sudden he was out. And I said, oh, he's just dealing with like a hip flexor. Nothing serious, just some hip tightness, some issues. He'll be back in a game or two. Well, next thing you know, it's actually a back issue yet again. I mean, this is kind of scary, all kidding aside. Like, the chronic back injuries this guy deals with and back issues, we're getting to a point where he might have to actually think about retiring. Like, I'm not I'm not even joking right now. Like, this is what, his third back injury? And and, and it's a it's a, like, a, I think they're saying it's like a pinched nerve. Like, that it just doesn't go away. That is something that will last pretty much the rest of his life. And if he can't deal with the pain, he can't play. I mean, it is comical at this point that this guy cannot play basketball for more than five games at a time. Like, it is so ridiculous. And and remember, I called this. I must have been, you know, Nostradamus or something. I said, watch Ben Simmons get off to a decent start, look respectable, and the Nets start look good. And then some phantom injury is going to come out of nowhere, and he's going to be out for half the year. Well, sure enough, that's pretty much what's happening. I just thought it was going to happen a little bit later in the season, not the first five or six games. I mean, he could be the most frustrating basketball player to watch ever. Like, like, and once again, the Nets could totally use him. His playmaking, his pushing of the tempo, his rebounding, his defense, all the little things that he does helps the Nets win and him not being out there, you can see it. You can see at times the offense gets stagnant, right? You can see at times that the Nets are getting beat up on the boards. You can see at times that they're giving up open shots. Those are all little things that Ben Simmons would help them with. But he can't play. He never can play. He's not allowed to play. The freaking world, basketball society, world, the gods, whatever you want to say, whatever is this magical force that continues to destroy the Nets and continue to make Ben Simmons never play basketball, just won't let him play. Like, it's just reality. And I said this before, going into the season, I had no expectations of Ben Simmons. I said, whatever the Nets get from Ben Simmons is just extra. And that just is more of a fact now than it ever has been before. I mean... It is comical. And like I said, I do feel bad. I feel bad for the guy. I, you know, I, I everyone always tries to make it sound like that he doesn't want to play and that he's just in it for the money. And No, I, I really do believe this guy is actually hurt. And I just think that he has this situation that if he's not 100%, he's not going to play. And is there anything really wrong with that? Because when you don't play, if, if you don't have the confidence to play at a high level when you physically, and you, then you physically can't, then that's going to just make things worse. So I actually don't judge the guy for not playing. But at this point, it is just 
one of the most unbelievable situations and circumstances in basketball. And and remember, he's the highest paid player on the Nets. He's making over $37 million this year. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. They're hoping that he'll be back in a couple weeks. They keep saying maybe a couple more weeks. You know, he's trying to get some treatment on his back, but the reality is they have no idea. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Simmons misses till the All-Star break. And then you know what's going to happen? He'll come back after the All-Star break, take a couple of games to figure it out, like three or four games. Then he's going to have like one or two really good games. He'll average, he'll score like 12 points, seven assists, and eight rebounds, and play good defense. And we're like, oh, here we go. Ben Simmons is back. And then another back injury is just going to flail up out of nowhere, and he'll miss the rest of the year. I mean, I don't know what Sean Marks – is got to do or going to do, but he's got to figure out how to get rid of this guy. And has no knock on him as the basketball player. He just can't stay healthy. And for the money that the Nets are paying him, if I'm Sean Marks at this point, I'm dumping him. I, I'm attaching a draft pick to Ben Simmons, and I'm saying, here's a first-round draft pick. Give me an expiring contract. Give me give me Gordon Haywood, right? Gordon Haywood is 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 a uh, is an expiring contract. With the Hornets, the Hornets aren't going anywhere. Just do that trade. Put one draft pick, Ben Simmons, for Gordon Hayward, and and it would work. It would work financially. And then the Nets have another great wing player that they have love so much. Like, I don't know. I don't know. And it's Hayward, not Haywood. But sometimes when you talk really fast, you say the wrong thing. Um, but still, I mean, it's unfortunate, but who knows? Maybe he'll get better. Maybe his back won't start hurting him as much. And after a week or two, he comes and steps in and maybe he can stay relatively healthy. <laughs> I can't believe I said that with a straight face. Go figure, right? Go figure. Okay. So we know the Nets have all these injuries, right? So the question now becomes, what can this next team do to continue to be competitive, to continue to play tough, and to not completely fall out of the Eastern Conference? Um, the reality is they are starting to struggle with these injuries. The last couple losses that they had, the Heat, the 76ers, and then the Hawks, the injury issues are showing. The lack of depth all of a sudden is showing. The lack of, of rebounding and defense and playmaking and shot creation, everything I just touched upon with the absence of these players is starting to show. They're slowly starting to look like the old crappy Nets. And, and, and I don't want that. So they need to start figuring this out. Now, look, they're not going to be able to overcompensate for all these injuries and all these issues, especially the Cam Thomas thing. But... If Lonnie Walker starts being featured more in the offense, if Claxton continues to play the way he played in the Hawks game, he had 22 points and 11 rebounds, and if Dinwiddie continues to be more of a playmaker and a tempo guy instead of isolation, perhaps this team can continue to build and win a couple more games until at least Cam Thomas comes back. Um, also, they need Cam Johnson to remember how to play basketball. I, I know he had a decent game recently also against the Hawks, but he needs to start becoming more of the focal point of the offense too. Like, without Cam Thomas, your three primary scorers should be, you know, Bridges, Johnson, and then Lonnie Walker the fourth, right? And then then Dinwiddie and Claxton are the other options. Like, th that's the way this team should be. But they need Cam Thomas – I mean, excuse me, Cam Johnson – to to be consistent enough and enough of a factor offensively to do that. So I don't know. So so those are some of the things that we need to see happen. And also, I don't think it's gonna happen, at least not yet. But I'd like to start seeing maybe Dariq Whitehead. Like he I know the Nets are trying to really ease him into things. Like he's been playing in the G League right now ever since he had the you know the foot procedure done over the offseason. But like I really like this guy. Like I, from from what I've seen from his highlights in college and and who he is as his skill set, like I really think he could be a really good player, and 
I know he's a rookie. I know he also has injuries. You know, go figure. Injury history. But I'd like to see the Nets give him a shot. I really would. And if not him, how about Amani Brooks? Because I've talked about him before, as I said, in the first or second next episode. I love that guy. And that guy could stretch the floor and come off the bench and give you 12 points like that, all from shooting the three-point shot. So, like, maybe the Nets start looking to him to stretch the floor and to create some shots and make some big shots down the stretch. So, like, there's other players that maybe Jock Vontras aren't looking at. But the reality is the current guys, they need to just take it to the next level and, and, and play a little bit better. Um, and if they do that, perhaps they'll be able to win a couple games and hang in there until Cam Thomas and maybe even Ben Simmons come back. Okay, so let's wrap up this episode. We're just looking at the next couple games for the Nets. Um, starting off with the Heat. Uh, look, they lost to the Heat most recently. They beat them the first time around. The Heat have kind of figured it out. They're becoming one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. Uh, it's in Brooklyn, but who knows? That could be a loss. But then they got a stretch of games where I feel like the Nets have to win. The Bulls, the Raptors, the Hornets, and then the Magic. And especially that Raptors game because that's their fourth and final game in Group C play. And they still got a shot to make it to the knockout round. So those four games of the next five, to me, the Nets have to win. They have to. Because after that, it gets pretty hard. Kings, Suns, Nuggets, Warriors after that. They'll be lucky to win one of those games. So they're at a point now where they've got to continue to beat the teams that they're better than, which, by the way, they pretty much have done. I believe that Hawks loss was their first loss this year to a team that's under 500, even though they were 6-7 and seven and now, they're, now they are 500. But, like, other than that, the Nets are doing a good job beating the teams that they're supposed to beat, but they're really struggling to beat the good teams. But at the end of the day, if you beat the teams that you're better than, you'll be in good shape. So that's what the Nets need to do with these next couple games coming up. Or else things are going to go south really, really fast. So there you have it. Let me know what you guys think about everything, about all the injuries, you know, what, what the Nets are going to do with Ben Simmons, the Cam Thomas thing. Um, you know, I, I do want to mention one other thing about uh, Ben Simmons. Um, another reason why I'm for the Nets getting rid of him is that uh, Trenton Warford is like another version of Ben Simmons. He's like ben, if Ben Simmons didn't pass as much, that's who Trenton Warford is. But Warford can also shoot the three-point shot. But like if you see how Warford plays, he kind of plays like Ben Simmons. Big, like six foot eight, you know, kind of – you know, point forward, pushes the tempo, gets to the basket. I kind of wish Warford would pass a little bit more, but if he starts playmaking, I mean, he's kind of like a slightly different version of Ben Simmons, right? Not quite as good defensively and not as good of a playmaker, but he's a better offensive player and he can actually shoot the three-point shot. But I just want to throw that out there. You know, I, you know, Trenton Warford, I haven't even talked about much at all this season, and he's played very well. So, I, I, you know, I guess it's just because he's not one of the main guys that I haven't really talked about him. But I know that I could live with him over Ben Simmons because you want to know something? He actually plays! Anyway, let me know what you guys think about everything. Keep your eyes open to the next Nets Boy episode. Who the hell knows when it's going to be? Just keep your eyes open for it. And until then, this is Nets Boy, signing off. Well,